David Arquette. Hello, Generation Nenye. What's your favorite scary movie? Two girls killed the exact day of the anniversary of the infamous Woodsboro murders. Hi, I'm Anissa Hernandez, and welcome to Enya Life. Today, I'm joined by the fabulous David Arquette. How are you? Welcome to Miami. Thank you. Thanks for having me. ¿Hablas un poquito de español o nada? Ah, poquito, muy poquito. Muy poquito, casi nada. Nah. Okay, we'll do this in English. Don't worry about it. So you can throw you... some things out at me. Every yeah. once in a while, like, yeah. bienvenido, ¿cómo estás? Tu nombre, ¿cómo te llamas? <laughs> no. Te <laughs> So tell me about your character. What made you decide to come back to Scream 4? Um, and do we play a role in Scream 4? Well, I just love the series so much. And it's just so much fun working with Nev and Courtney and Wes Craven, the whole crew. It's kind of like we built this family. It's been 15 years of, of making these films. And, and I love the role of Dewey as well. He's just, you know, a police officer that doesn't get any respect and kind of got a lot of insecurity. And, and people are dying all around him and he feels sort of, you know, powerless. It's just a, a fun character to play because you can find little moments of, uh, you know, insecurity and comedy and vulnerability. Well, this is a horror film, but Dewey, your character, has amazing comedic timing throughout the series, throughout all four films. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. How does uh, comedy play a role in Scream 4? I think, um, I don't know, it's just, you know, playing this guy, he's just, I don't know, he's got a lot of stuff on his shoulder. He's, he doesn't get the respect he really wants and needs, and that's kind of just funny. And he's with this girl who's, you know, very strong, and, um, and then all these murders are happening. And there's nothing he can do about it. And he's such a sweet guy at heart that he doesn't understand why people would do something like this. So it just, it just lends into it. I mean, to me, when acting's the best is when you really find it, you know, you ground yourself and it feels like it could really be happening. And the characters in this movie seem like they could be real characters, so that's when it works best. Oh, two of you got phone calls? Yeah, us too. What's your favorite scary movie? It was the killer's voice. From Stab? Or, I mean, you know, from your life. I'm Kirby, by the way. I'm their friend. And the killer didn't call you? No. Is, is that a bad thing? Does that mean that I'm not going to live as long as these two? No. Maybe. Of course not. Just, uh, just be careful. Oh my god, did you hear that? I'm going to be next. And Nev Campbell actually came back for Scream 4. How was it working with her on this film? I love Nev, and I think it's amazing to see her play this character. It's hard on her, you know, she runs around and she's always, get, you know, having to fight and, you know, scream and... It's a lot of stress for her, but uh, I just, when she came on the screen as that character, I was like, oh, it's so great to see her play that again. And Courtney as well, to see her play Gail and get it like into her sort of tough Gail role. I just really enjoy the series in general and all of the characters. So it's a real honor to be a part of it. Scream 1 was that, I mean, even from the first scene with Drew Barrymore, I still remember it, and it haunted me till this day. Yeah. Can people expect some of that Scream 1 in Scream 4? Yeah, I mean, it definitely turns it up a notch in Scream 4. At the beginning is really interesting. It's very exciting and kind of, mm. you know, a lot of twists and, and you know, it's, it's just funny. There's humor right off the bat. The whole tone of the film is intact and uh, and then you get back into the story you know it I don't know to me it's a, it's such a fine balance when uh, you know Wes make and and Kevin Williams and the writer create this world where it's you know you can believe it and and it's still kind of like has elements of like joking with pop culture but it all really works and this really is my favorite sequel of the whole group are you still gonna be a little Clint Eastwoodish in this film? Or? Yeah, did you get that? I always get it. And yeah. I love your character. Yeah, well. that's what he's like. He he loves that kind of like manly thing, but you know, then it. it's like, like he then he gets it. shook it up, but it's not really who he is. Tell the people why they should watch this film. Go out and have a good time and and laugh and scream and and be part of a a series of films that's that have lasted 15 years. Mm -hmm. I think you'll really enjoy. It. 
I'm excited for like a new generation to discover like it and then, you know, find this film because they do bring out a whole group of younger actors and it's really interesting. It was interesting to see them sort of where they are in their careers and where we are now and just kind of like look at it all. It's a rare opportunity. But you are aware that although the younger generation might have not seen the first film, yeah. they're very aware of the Scream mask. I know that mask haunted me for a couple of years. Yeah, just no. now getting over it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Robert's residence. Welcome home, Sydney. You're a survivor, aren't you, Sydney? What good's it to be a survivor if everyone close to you is dead? You can't save them. All you can do is watch. <laughs> audiences have become savvy to the rules of the originals. I mean, there are still rules, but the rules have changed. And the kill has got to be, like, way more extreme. The unexpected is the new cliché, and virgins can die now. To be the new version, you know, 2.0, the killer should be filming the murders. Yeah, it's a natural next step in psycho slasher innovation. Go ahead if you have the guts. Well, it's time for someone new to die. These aren't just random killings. There's something really scary about a guy with a knife who just... snaps. I hear you like horror movies. It's for you.